What's going on everyone? Austin John Please here and today I'm going to be going over everything you need to know for the Grand Underground starting off your adventure at Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I just want to let you guys know that I've actually recorded like an hour and a half and I was editing it down and then I was doing re-edits and everything else because there's a lot of information down here and I decided that instead of doing one giant video to tell you everything, I'm going to be breaking it down to much more simple, easy to digest pieces. And the first and most important thing that we're going to be talking about today is going to be statues and how to get shiny statues in the Grand Underground. In the Grand Underground, after talking to the digging man and getting access to using a digging drill, you can go to any wall in the Grand Underground and make a secret base. Let's head inside of this one. There's a wide variety of Pokemon that are available in statues. I believe it is 203 Pokemon that are available in this base statue. And by base statue, I mean like Torchic and Monferno over here. And then we have the exact same amount of species of Pokemon available in their shiny variants. This combustion statue over here is what's called a shiny statue. I didn't make the term up, but if you dig it up, it has the shiny icon, we're calling it shiny statues. Then you have a final tier of statue, and those are the legendary statues. There's a total of 17 legendary statues programmed into the game, although not all of them have been found in an exact way to get them. I'm just gonna show you the Zente over here because, you know, we're keeping this video spoiler free. With all that combined, there's a grand total of 430 34 statues programmed into the game, which I think is pretty insane. That's a lot of statues down here between the regular, the shiny variants, and including all of the legendary statues, right? Now you may be asking, what do the statues do? Well, all of these statues have a hidden value of how much fire they add to wild Pokemon. The smallest Pokemon, as in first forms and baby Pokemon, they're gonna be adding the least amount of value. And then evolved Pokemon are gonna be adding slightly more. Final form Pokemon add significantly more. Legendary Pokemon of the same element add dramatically more. The shiny variants basically take all three of these statues here and double that value. Meaning that this Combustion statue over here is worth about double of this Monferno. There's a very long, complicated, and boring list that I did in my first recording that you don't need to know. All you need to know is you want to prefer your legendary statues, and then your final form shiny statues, and then your secondary form shiny statues, and then your baby form shiny statues, and then you could do the regular statues as well. After you put them all into a room, you can check this orb over here, and you're going to see statue effect. You're going to see that this is raises the appearance rate of fire type Pokemon. I've noticed that there is slightly raises, it's denoted with one arrow, raises, which is two arrows, and sharply raises, which is three arrows. I've been unable to document if there's more than three arrows available. So again, just putting it into perspective, the Pokemon you want to do in order of statue placing down is any legendaries, any final form shinies, any shinies that are single form or the secondary form, and then you get to all of your basics. So this is an order from best on the left to worst on the right. And by best to worst, I mean the most amount of influence they have toward a specific element. Now, statue effect, two steps of electric type. Now you may be saying, what does that actually do? If you only have a small amount of statues, you aren't going to notice a very big difference. However, once you start to get more statues and more shiny statues and more legendary statues, that's when you get to the point that you're going to be seeing a dramatic increase in those Pokemon spawn. And as far as the electric type, that doesn't mean that there's going to be electric type Pokemon spawning in rooms that can't have electric types. That means that any room that has the possibility of electric type Pokemon is going to have more electric type Pokemon. When you have only one badge and you come down here, there's a total of 40 one or 42 different species of Pokemon that can be in the underground and some of them are extremely rare spawns. Here in the Dazzling Cave, you're guaranteed to find Ghastly. If you're playing Pearl, you can also find Mischievous. However, there's a 20 to 25% chance to find Duskull. Only in Diamond, there's a 15% chance to find Elekid and in both games a 15% chance to find Smoochum. 
However, the game is programmed that of all the spaces, one of them is allowed to be this rare spawn, and there's a 50% chance that the rare spawn doesn't even show up. So that Elekid at 15% half of the time is kind of more like 7.5%. So you may have to zone out of this room 10, 15 times in order for it to show up. Now, if you have a whole bunch of electric statues down, that means that, well, Elekid isn't going to be that rare. It's also worth noting a fun thing that Elekid is able to be found in the wild holding the, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, the Electrolyzer. And that's the item that's needed for its final evolution in this game. So that's the effect that statues have. They make it so that Pokemon that can appear in a room of that element are going to be more common. In the post game, I think the rare table expands a little bit, just my theory, because I have found three Elekids in that same room at the same time in post game. I've now switched to my game that is before the post game. I think I have seven badges on this account, and I want to talk about the internet mechanics for going into the underground. When you're placed in the Grand Underground, either in local communication, online communication with groups or with link codes or with no filters whatsoever, you're going to be dropped down here. And we're going to look at that side of the screen. And as I start to move, you're going to notice that it's going to take a while for my digging spots to show up. There they are. You're also going to see some blue dots. Those blue dots are the other people that I was randomly grouped with. And you're also going to notice that they're just all over the place. They're not grouping you to people that are actually near you, right? You're also going to notice that on the left hand side, it says 11 out of 40. And those are the diglets. The diglets and dug trios that you get by yourself or on local communication or on the internet are all shared amongst everyone. That means that you could literally be down here if you connect to the internet, hunt for wild Pokemon, and then just keep an eye out on the left. And when that's 30 or 40, and that's getting pretty high, you want to come out here because that's going to activate what's called Lightstone. Lightstone means that there's an increased chance for you to find gorgeous boxes in the underground. Let's talk about digging specifically. Hit R, and then you're going to see your shiny space. It's denoted on the map up there. We're going to be digging into here. I've come up with the exact places that you should be digging first at the highest priority as soon as you come down here, these 12 spaces on my screen. You want to come through, you want to knock them out. I recommend only using the chisel for every single thing you do down here, only using the chisel on these 12 spaces first. The reason for that is, say for example, I saw something crazy over here and I used up all of my durability. Next thing I know, I come down here and there's a box and I want that box because that's going to have a Pokemon statue in it, right? I'm going to be kicking myself in the butt if that happened. I, Austin John, am not responsible for any adhesives that are left on your TV, your Nintendo Switch, or anything else. If you do decide to mark it up on your TV, you may want to use post-it pads, something that's very easily removable. You might want to put a screen protector on your Switch or get, I don't know, cellophane tape. Nope, not cellophane tape. That's going to leave residue. Saran wrap and make some X's. Whatever you want to do, I'm not responsible. Great, let's continue digging. We have four things here. Fantastic. We're going to go through. Anytime that you see these ground areas, that's just going to be one hit. Anytime you see these gray areas, that's two hits. Anytime that you see these big rocks, that's three hits. Just doing all of these spaces, you're pretty much never going to be above the halfway mark. And now that I've uncovered all 12 spaces, I can clearly see that we have a box down here. All of the boxes and the best loot in the underground are all three by three. So because of that, this is the way that I'm going to be searching for all the best loot. And then once I've done, I know that I've uncovered two of the three things and everything else is going to be four by four or smaller. So I'm just going to look for any time that I have a crack tile. And with the chisel, when you hit down, it's going to activate any crack tiles in the four cardinal directions. So doing that, did the top, bottom, left and right. If I were to come over here, top, bottom, left, and right. And it's all about just maximizing how much you're going to be uncovering that's necessary with the amount of durability you have left. Fantastic. Now see how that's cracked right there? I'm going to hit the left one, and that's going to uncover it. That's how you're going to be able to uncover all of the things down here, no problemo. And now it's a little rough because I'm getting near the end. There's one item left somewhere. And I just want to uncover all the 4x4 spaces. Oh, we found it. Beautiful. Fantastic tutorial. Go Austin John. 
that box is what's called a pretty stone box, which is gonna have that regular stone looking statue. I got a crowbat, nice. When you're in the Grand Underground, you may come across other people in the Grand Underground, like this guy over here. I can enter his secret base. I'm gonna enter Mary's secret base. Mary, what you got in here, huh? How much digging you been doing? Oh, Mary's been doing a lot of digging. But as you can see, there are no shiny statues whatsoever. I'm gonna do the little digging icon, and I wanna see people digging. Please dig for me. Now, when someone is digging, you're gonna see these big glistening spots. I don't have any data mine or any proof or anything else like that. It's just my personal theory that there is increased chances of finding good or better loot. And in addition to that, while I can't see it right now, I'm actually helping dig on that person. So some of the digs that I do do become visible on their screen, which actually makes their digging job a little bit easier. So it's sort of like a nice handoff system that you're helping people and they're going to be uncovering stuff easier. And in my theory, there's a better chance for you to find good loot by helping someone out. So I just did a digging spot next to the person that I was just with, and I'm hoping that they're gonna join. I have no idea if they are. Oh, they are, perfect. There we go, there's footage of them actually digging on my screen. Now their map is completely different from my map. So because of that, they may be actually trying to get some, they're using a hammer, that's not a good thing. So they may be trying to get very different things than what I have on my screen. So because of that, it may look like they're hitting an area that's already done and the durability makes no sense. But on their screen, it does make sense. So what I really like to do, I like to join random people and I like to do my strategy because it's going to reveal pretty much everything on their screen as well. And if you're one of the enlightened people who have seen my video on how to dig efficiently, you can join random people, you can help them out on how to dig the best in the Grand Underground, that's for sure. So the real reason I showed you those 12 digging spaces is because that's going to be paramount in getting yourself shiny statues. The best way to get yourself shiny statues is to join online with random people. As bad as that sounds, I don't know how well the servers are going to hold up. Right now it's 12.40 p.m. on American release day. Everyone collect your diglets and dug trios. Pro tip, when you're at 36, 37, you definitely want to get into an area that has all of your digging spaces in a quick little succession. You want to get all of your diglets and dug trios to activate lightstone mode, which by the way is only for four real life minutes. There we go, just got my 40th, perfect. Now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna dig really fast. We're going to just do these 12 spaces. Okay, boop, 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 boop. And I'm looking for what's called a gorgeous box. A gorgeous box is going to be a very, very, found it. Once you find it, massively hit A, and then also ZL and ZR also act like A. On these screens, hold down B, and you're going to want to spam ZL and ZR. And we got a shiny Baneri statue, fantastic. That's the fastest way to dig up gorgeous boxes during Lightstone. Now, you can join down here at a random time when someone has 39 diglets found, or 40 diglets found, and they're currently in the middle of Lightstone. So, again, use the D-pad, come over here, uncover these 12 spaces, you found it, perfect. You just wanna spam that hammer on top of the middle of it and you're guaranteed to dig it out and get out of there. You do not wanna get any other treasure during Lightstone, nothing else is boosted. Shiny Gyarados, that's an awesome statue. If you do it well enough, my high score, the amount of statues that I've gotten in one Lightstone is seven. And, as you can see right here, you're not guaranteed a gorgeous box. That's just a regular old fire box, unfortunately. And this is perfect. So I have a digging space right next to a hideaway. I'm gonna do this digging space, zone out, zone back in, and hopefully I get a spawn right next to me. Again, Austin, don't be distracted. Don't be, there we go, perfect. Cause that was, I think that was a green shard over there. I don't want that green shard right now. I just want this gorgeous bug box. So now that I'm done, I'm gonna zone out. I'm gonna zone right back in. Four minutes is not a lot of time, trust me. <laughs> it's also worth mentioning that during this four minutes, there's a slightly higher chance to find wild shiny Pokemon. Not really enough for that it's a viable strategy, but it is, it is a thing. Oh, someone is joining me, perfect. Unfortunately, I already found what I wanted and they're gonna be so confused on why I just used a hammer 48 times in the same space. You do not wanna waste time. You just wanna go, you wanna be efficient. 
and as long as you're zoned into an instance of digging, even if the timer goes out, you're still going to get it. Oh, that's a fossil. Don't want the fossil right now. Perfect, found it. Gorgeous steel box. Is it going to be another Steelix? Ooh, Mawile. Don't think I have that yet. Come on, let's do it. Can we get both of these? That'd be magical. Uh, it's not a gorgeous box. Shucks. Also, by not digging up treasure, you don't have that secondary reward screen that shows you, you know, where all the small spheres drop very, very slowly. Another gorgeous steel box. Ooh, Steelix. <laughs> Called that. Is the online light stone slightly longer than four minutes? All right, so that whistle sound means that I'm done. And because my sonar went off after, I actually don't know if this instance has the boosted rates. I don't think it does because we didn't just get one. Oh, and we got ourselves a regular Steelix too. So there you go. You just saw how in one light stone during one diglet rush, I was able to get myself several shiny statues in the Grand Underground in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Fantastic, so in this video you learned what statues do, the value that statues have, how to sharply increase the rate of wild Pokemon appearing that can appear in the hideaways in the Grand Underground, how to dig efficiently, and how to get shiny statues in the Grand Underground. The Grand Underground still has a lot more for us to cover, so if you still want to know more helpful tips and tricks, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and until next time, Austin John out.